It's not very often a fight is too violent for me, but Chandler versus Gaethje. I just woke up Sunday morning, went, you know what? Might as well catch some of the UFC that I missed last night. Turn that fight on, first fight of the card. Oh my gosh, non-stop violence. Like we could condense in 30 seconds more damage, more violence than usually happens in a whole title fight, a whole 25 minute title fight. There was so much damage, impact, body trauma. I was just sitting there cringing, full on cringing. But hats off to the two athletes they put on a tremendous fight, no doubt. Today I wanna to go through and talk about three points of this fight, which I think would have made the fight, granted not as exciting, but a little bit smarter, a little bit safer. So both athletes could have come out a little less damaged. And in particular, I think I'm actually gonna focus on Chandler. Three things he could have done to make the damage just a little bit less because Gaethje just, he's a machine, he's a truck. And even though Chandler was thumping with big shots, he just kept moving forward, maintained his composure. So let's start off and let's talk about that calf kick. What can you do about that calf kick when people keep attacking and attacking because it's just unconditioned. It's unconditioned compared to the thigh. So when you have somebody that you know is gonna throw this kick. We basically only have a few options. Number one is to try and get the check off. That's gonna be the easiest thing, try and get that check off. But what often happens that doesn't allow people to get it off is I think the kick just comes that much faster. It's a little less telegraphed than kicking up to this area here versus just about, just kind of like a little soccer kick. So people don't see it coming. But if you're able to get that check up and even better, sort of tuck the heel back. So if they do connect with something, it's gonna connect with the knee. That is a possibility. If they hit the knee or they catch that calf too many times, they're gonna leave that alone. The next best option, in my opinion, is just to get very good at just a little hollow out. Just suck that leg back in and get it out of the way. But that's easier said than done, especially when you're somebody like Chandler, who's very wide in his stance, sort of sucking back, leaves your head a little bit exposed, so it's not gonna always work. The third option is to take the toes of the front foot and just turn them out just a tiny bit. Now I know that makes my stance look slightly awkward, but overall, if I have a choice between getting my calf mangled up or just turning my toes out just a little bit, where now when they kick, they're gonna batter their shin into my shin, it's not a nice way. It's super violent, it's gonna be super unpleasant, but if they kick the shin too many times, there's a chance they're gonna go, you know what, I don't like this. This is hurting my own leg as much as it's probably hurting him. Whereas when you're just landing against the meat of the calf, it's always better for the guy who's kicking. So we can either work on getting that check up, we can hollow out, or we can just turn the foot out very slightly to expose the shin a little bit more to that incoming kick. Next up, I would have liked to see Chandler back up just a little bit more. He spent so much time in the beginning almost just sort of, I don't know, fronting, like trying to show Gaethje that he can stand there. And in those moments, that's when he took the big shots, like that uppercut. He's standing his ground. Once he started getting hurt and he realized, okay, I need to back up, then he started doing a little bit better. Because let's not forget, with these little four ounce MMA gloves, it's so hard to guard up in the same way. So we wanna make sure that every time somebody has that punch, we're able to move back. And some of the best guys in the world, guys like Israel Adesanya, in terms of defense, he very rarely will just stand there and absorb or block a lot of shots. It's that little step backwards where he just creates that distance, making it that much more difficult for somebody to land. If Chandler would have just been a little bit more proactive with his backing up, I think his head would have taken a little bit less damage. And that moves me on to my third and final point. When we see Gaethje throw, when he throws his shot, his head, is all over the place. He doesn't leave his head front and center. And getting your head off that center line is gonna be such a big factor in not allowing those counter shots to land as frequently. But when we see Chandler throw, very often his head is in one position and it makes that counter shot from your opponent so much easier to land. You're blocking, you're blocking, you're blocking, you know you only have to throw right here. Whereas if you're blocking, you're blocking, the guy's head's here, and then it's here, and then it's here, you're always gonna be chasing that evasive, elusive head. So when we throw, especially with MMA gloves, head off the center line. Off the center line, off the center line, it's gonna keep you very safe. Guys like Dominic Cruz, 
We're very good at that. When you watched him, he's here, he's here, he's here, he's here, and his head is always on the go, making it very hard to catch him. Now, there is an argument, which is very true, that when you start throwing your head from side to side, when you get hit, if you happen to be leaning into it, you don't see it, it's gonna put you down that much harder, and that is very true. You happen to make a mistake, or the guy happens to get either a really skilled shot or lucky with that shot as your head's moving and you meet into the source of the punch, yes, it can damage you even more. But in a fight like this, Chandler versus Gaethje, that head movement, I think that made one of the big differences why Gaethje was able to take the win and why when he walked out of the fight, his face wasn't mashed up like Chandler's. So as entertaining as these very rare fights are where guys just stand there and they're just beating on each other, I'm really glad we don't see too many of these because yes, they're entertaining in the moment, but I feel so bad for the fighters after and I don't ever wanna see anybody take long lasting damage and too many of these type of fights can definitely cause that in an athlete. So I'm glad these are few and far between and most people decide to fight technical. But nevertheless, a crusher of a fight, very entertaining, maybe a little bit too much for my Sunday morning exposure to violence, but I'm sure everybody last night on Saturday was really enjoying this event. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of Chandler versus Gaethje. If you did, please give the video a like. If you haven't already, join the channel and get subscribed. As always guys, train hard. I'll see you back here soon for another video.